The following is a weekly weather briefing from your National Weather Service office in Spokane, Washington. I'm meteorologist Jonathan Fox. Taking a look at the weather ahead for today and this afternoon, we will continue to see a chance of showers and general thunderstorms over a good chunk of the inland northwest. For Tuesday and Thursday, we will see a gradual drying and warming trend as our pattern begins to change just a little bit through the middle of the week. By the time we get to Friday and into Saturday, the beginning of the holiday weekend, we're going to see a weak weather front move into the area. That'll bring with it a chance of rain as well as some cooler temperatures. And when we get into the latter half of the Memorial Day weekend, the jury is still out. Some of the model solutions we're using are indicating we're going to see a dry and warm pattern, while other models are suggesting we're going to continue with a wet and cooler weather pattern for the latter half of the weekend. Finally, as far as hydrology goes, the river levels are expected to remain high over portions of northern Washington and extreme northern Idaho through much of the week. However, the worst is done in certain portions of the inland northwest. So let's get started taking a look at a satellite picture from this afternoon. And what we see is a large low pressure system centered off the Oregon coast right around here. And from it, we see a trough acid axis extending to the northeast into eastern Washington and northern Idaho. With that little trough axis, we continue to see unsettled conditions. This will keep us on the cool side of the weather track for the day at least and into the evening. It will also give us a continued chance of showers and thunderstorms. As we move on over the next couple of days, this low pressure system is expected to slowly scoot into the desert southwest or southern Nevada. And as it does, it will take the bulk of the storm track southward with it. But we'll take a look at that on the next few slides. Anyways, as far as for this afternoon and evening, we're looking at a map of where we expect the best chance of thunderstorms to occur. Through this afternoon, areas shaded in green will probably see the best chance of showers and thunderstorms. However, any portion of the inland northwest could see some showers through the afternoon and into early evening hours. These showers and storms which form will be slow moving and could produce locally heavy rains, especially over this area of Ferry and Stevens County. And with the thunderstorms, of course, we'll see occasional cloud to ground lightning strikes and even a small chance of hail as we get into the peak hours of the afternoon heating. By the time we move into Tuesday, that low pressure system begins to move off to the southeast. And as it does, our thunderstorm risk area will begin to shrink as the atmosphere begins to stabilize. As such, we're only expecting a small chance of thunderstorms here over a small portion of northeast Washington, a good chunk of the Idaho panhandle. And also, you could say there's a small risk perhaps over a small portion of the Camas Prairie. It looks like the risk for thunderstorms compared to today will be quite a bit less than what we're seeing and we'll also see a smaller risk of heavy rains as well. Once again, the lightning threat will continue. By the time we get into the Wednesday and Thursday time period, the low pressure system, as I've already alluded to, begins to move south into southern Nevada. And as it does, the storm track sags south with it. You see here over the desert southwest is where one storm track is. The other one moves into central and northern sections of British Columbia, so that leaves most of the inland northwest high and dry between the storm tracks. That will result in a drying and warming trend for the region and plenty of sunshine as well. By the time we get into Friday and Saturday, the next low pressure system, which was well west of the area as of this afternoon, begins to move into the Gulf of Alaska. And as it does, the storm track begins to sag south of the Canadian border. That will bring a increasing chance of precipitation by the time we get to Friday and Saturday. We'll also see a small chance of thunderstorms as well over northeast Washington and the northern tip of the Idaho Panhandle. As the storm track sags southward, we should begin to see a cooling trend as well as a trend toward weather weather as well. And as we look forward even beyond that, we're looking into the latter half of the Memorial Day weekend. This is for Sunday and beyond. One of the models I'm showing here uh, indicates that the low pressure system, which was over the Gulf of Alaska, begins to sag to the southeast and eventually move into the Pacific Northwest. If that model comes to fruition, we're actually looking at a fairly cool and moist weekend with more showers and possible thunderstorms into much of the Memorial Day weekend. However, there's another model which is indicating that the storm track will move once again into British Columbia and bring warming and drying conditions across the inland northwest for Sunday and Monday. 
We'll just have to wait and see how things pan out, but that's a lot of model uncertainty for that time period. So please stay tuned to later forecasts from the National Weather Service, and we'll see which way the weather begins to trend. Here's a look, a brief look at the seven-day temperature outlook, and this is for Spokane. The red dotted line is what's average for this time of year, which is mid to upper 60s for highs and lows in the middle 40s or so. So you can see the red line is the forecast. The solid red line is the forecast, which indicates temperatures a little bit above normal, uh, peaking sometime in the Wednesday and Thursday time frame and then cooling off. If the weather models come to fruition, uh, temperatures for Sunday and Monday will be actually quite a bit cooler than what we're showing here. And again, here's our chance of precipitation by the time we get into the weekend down on the bottom line. And this is for Spokane. For the Wenatchee area, same thing. Temperatures peak sometime by Wednesday or Thursday and then slowly fall after that. And right now we're only indicating a small chance of showers for the Wenatchee area for this afternoon and not much by the time we get into the weekend, the holiday weekend. On to hydrology. More minor flooding is possible on the Okanagan River. The ongoing melt of high elevation snowpack with it continuing will continue to see rivers remaining high, but most won't see flooding within the next week. The rivers of concern will remain in the eastern Cascades, the northern Idaho Panhandle, and quite a bit of snow melt still to occur yet in British Columbia. Several rivers will approach or at least exceed action stage, and they include the Moye, Kootenai, Stahican, Okanagan, and Kettle Rivers, while small mountain streams will continue to see high spring flows. Here's a look at the snowpack that we just grabbed today. And you can see from the extreme eastern portion of Washington and North Idaho and into the other side of the Continental Divide that the snowpack remains fairly high for this time of year. In fact, many locations are seeing 150 to 200 percent of the normal snow water equivalent for this time of year. Meanwhile, in the Cascades, uh, conditions have lessened quite a bit as far as the potential for increased snow melt into those areas. We've lost a lot of our low and mid-level snowpack and all that remains is the high elevation snowpack. So these numbers have come down quite a bit over the past week but still are fairly close to normal across the northern and central Cascades. Here's a look at just one of the snow tells which happens to be in that area in the north central Cascades. And what we're looking at is the snow water equivalent for just one of our snow tells or snow measuring sites. The black line indicates where our current snow water equivalent is. Green line is normal. So you can see we probably peaked at the beginning of May, as this black line indicates. And over the past um, two or three weeks or so, that snow water equivalent has begun to fall pretty much near normal. You'd expect that this time of year. We still remain a little above normal, though. But we expect to see the snow water equivalent continue to taper off through the remainder of the spring and obviously into the summer as well. So if we move forward then, just looking at some of the hydrographs, uh, these are the rivers that are of main concern right now. The Kootenai River at Bonners Ferry shows we're solidly at action stage, and the river should remain there throughout much of the week and not falling until we get into the Memorial Day weekend. The Moye River at Eastport pretty much shows the same thing. We're going to stay steady state right at action stage or a little above throughout most of the week. For the eastern Cascades and Okanagan Highlands, Kettle River near Ferry briefly touched action stage over the previous weekend. However, we've fallen since then. But it looks like with continued snow melt throughout the remainder of the week, we should remain just below action stage. Meanwhile, on the Okanagan River near Tenasket, that river has likely peaked and should fall throughout the week. We'll probably go below flood stage sometime by Wednesday and remain there throughout much of the week. Perhaps there's a small chance that we could hit minor flood stage by the time we get to early next week, but the confidence in that is not terribly high at this time. Finally, the 8 to 14 day outlook, and this would be for Tuesday through the remainder of the following week, and we're looking at near normal temperatures with below normal precip, or at least odds would be stacked in that direction. So in summary, we're looking at a continued unsettled conditions with thunderstorms this afternoon and perhaps Tuesday as well. We should see drying conditions by midweek. By the end of the week, things should turn cooler and we should see an increased chance of precipitation. By the weekend, though, by the end of the weekend, at least Sunday into Memorial Day, it could be warm or dry or it could be cooler and wetter, but it depends which model actually verifies. There are quite a bit of differences right now, so our confidence isn't high in either direction at this point. Finally, as far as hydrology goes, the worst of the flooding is likely over for the Cascades unless we're expected to see a 
very heavy rain event, which we aren't expecting at this time, or very hot conditions moving in, and we're not expecting that either. The rivers over northeast Washington and north Idaho still have higher waters ahead as there's a lot of snow melt still expected over British Columbia and Montana. So, as usual, you can stay informed for our latest forecast via these latest um, social media avenues. You can go to our website, you can look to, at Facebook, or you can follow us on Twitter, and of course this video on YouTube as well. So thank you for your attention, have a great week, and we will talk to you next week.